All right, I just want to take a couple minutes here to show you my sword collection. Uh, now, if you're one of my fellow King James Bible believers here on YouTube or wherever you're watching this, um, you'll I think you'll get an appreciation for some of the swords in my collection. And of course, I'm speaking spiritually here. I'm not talking so much about you know physical swords. I'm talking about uh, spiritual swords. First one I want to show you here is this is the smallest one that I have. Of course, you know, I have little track type ones, but this is New Testament, Psalms, and Proverbs. Neat little Bible. Uh, I used to carry it in my front shirt pocket, but then I started thinking it kind of looks like a pack of cigarettes. So, <laughs> so I decided, uh, let me stand up here quick. I decided I'd put it here in my pocket, the little cargo pocket thing on the side of my pants there. And that's pretty handy. I can take it with me wherever I go. Um, this one here, I originally did for one of my DVDs I produced from NIV to KJV. And because it looks so much like the NIV that I used for 15 years, I wanted to, I put this sticker on it. So this is the one I use down here in uh, the studio whenever I'm making videos. Okay, now I have another one that's upstairs by the computer uh, whenever I'm doing my computer type work. I have it there that somebody asked me a question, I can, you know, get it and everything. But uh, now I want to show you a little bit more detail, so I'm going to switch cameras here. All right, here again you can see the one that I put this sticker on. It's one I use down here. This one is the one that I use. This is a Cambridge. Um, it's got the wide margins and everything. And this one, you can see I have it all marked up. Uh, See, it's not a idol to me because you don't, you would never uh, write on your idol. <laughs> so it's not an idol. It's this is just my main Bible that I use to preach from, and everything. But it's nice too because it has all this uh, note paper in the back here. You can fill it up with tons of, of notes. Really nice Bible. Uh, I kind of wish I would have. I know uh, Brother Brian McClurg there. He has a lot of videos about. Uh, the Bearing Precious Seed Bibles, and I kind of wish I would have spent my money on one of those, but uh, nevertheless, still a good Bible. Um, this one here, I just got not too long ago, the Ruckman Reference Bible. Uh, just, just a great work. Uh, Dr. Ruckman's really a blessing. Uh, he really answers a lot of questions that most preachers are afraid to talk about, and uh, he has just a lot of, just a wealth of information in here. I highly recommend this thing if you're new as a Christian, if you're young. And uh, I mean, just the appendix section has just some really interesting stuff in it. Very, very good Bible. You know, again, I highly recommend this thing. There's enough space over here you can write some things in it. I just have this one mainly as a reference Bible right now. I'm not really marking it up. Then I have. This little one here, this is nice. I can take this on trips or whatever. This little uh, snap flap type Bible. Print's not too bad. You know, I can put some notes in the back. Some tracks in there. You can kind of keep them a little bit more secure. They won't fall out. So that's kind of a neat little option there. Here I have my two 66 caliber <laughs> sidearms. Uh, 66 books in the Bible there, that's what I mean, if you don't know what I'm saying. But these both I bought used at a, a local bookstore here. They're both Cambridge editions. Very nice little Bibles. These are the ones I take when we go street preaching or going out door to door. I take one of these too. I originally just had the one, but then I found another one. I thought, hey, why not? I'll, I'll buy it. I can always give it to somebody if they need one. Uh, this one here is a photo scanned image or a photo scanned copy of an original 1611 okay this is not a reprint and uh, let me just zoom in here okay it says but Peter stood at the door without then went out that other disciple which was chosen unto or which was known I'm, I'm sorry unto the high priest and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. They say, oh, if you had a 1611, you couldn't read it. Well, I just read you that verse there. Now, granted, it's a lot more difficult to read. The font is a lot different. The spelling is different. 
but you read that and you compare this thing to your modern day brand new Bible that you buy off the store shelf and it's going to say basically the same thing. I mean there's, there's no real changes. I mean they switch some words around here and there but it says the same thing. So don't fall for the lie that you can't you couldn't read a 1611. I just did. Okay. A little bit more difficult because it's in the Gothic font um, instead of the Roman the Times New Roman that we use now. But that's another interesting one. Now getting on to some of the uh, older ones here. This one, I'm holding it upside down. This one here is a marked edition of the King James Bible. And this is kind of an interesting one. This one's about, uh, oh, probably about 90 years old, this Bible here. I found this in a bookstore. Just kind of thought it was a fascinating old Bible. I didn't collar this. It comes from the printer this way. And they have it collar coded and they have little letters here on the sides indicating prophecy or salvation or whatever. So this, this is kind of a neat old Bible here. just thought this was interesting. This one comes pre-collared from the printer. And of course you have ones where there's prophecy and salvation in the same verse so they make it half and half. Kind of an interesting older Bible. Now if you've seen my video, uh, the real Bible version issue exposed, and you'll recognize this one. Uh, this is one of the this is the second oldest one in my collection. I found this at a used bookstore. Holding it upside down again. And uh, this one is from 1868. And uh, this is an old King James Bible. And it's so neat to be able to read this thing. Go and pick it up and I can read it. And you know, uh, there I'll go to a familiar passage. Very quick here. One I discussed here in another uh, video. Okay. 1 Timothy 3.16 And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. You see now, I like that. I like being able to go back to basically when the Civil War was, was, I guess, over, and right after the Civil War, and this was some Christian's Bible. And it reads the same as my modern-day King James Bible. I like that. I like to have some antiquity to my faith. I wouldn't want to use these new versions that don't go back, you know, 40, 50 years. Okay? Actually, they do go back. They go back to the Jesuit Stewie Reams Bible of 1610. So this is a one of my favorite Bibles right here. Um, just a neat old Bible. But now I want to show you the big one. This is the oldest Bible in my collection. Right here. This was given to me by a pastor friend. This thing is almost 200 years old now. And uh, this is a, a large, there's the spine. Unfortunately it's kind of rough shape being as old as it is. And um, this would have been a, a large print uh, pulpit type Bible that you would have kept up at the pulpit in your church. But just a, a beautiful old King James Bible. Again, I can read through here and it says the exact same thing that my modern King James Bible says. Okay, my brand new, just printed hot off the press King James Bible reads the same as this. Now I just want to make a point real quick here in conclusion. Uh, another one of the attacks that you'll hear against the King James Version is that Erasmus only had a few late manuscripts to make his first editions of the Textus Receptus, well, what later became the Textus Receptus. And, of course, they're right. Erasmus had a few late manuscripts that he used. But uh, let me just make a point here. When I prepare a sermon for Sunday morning, I don't use my oldest Bible. I use the newest one, okay? This one here is the one that I purchased only a few years back. Why would I have to use go back to the one here that's the oldest and falling apart? Erasmus had access to the Vaticanus manuscript. He didn't use it. He knew it was corrupt. All right? Don't fall for this lie that you have to have the oldest and you have to have the you know that's nonsense. And and let me just say something else. The reason I have a lot of these old Bibles this one here in particular, 
this thing here from 1868. The reason I have this is because it wasn't used. The people that had it, you go through this thing, you'll find four-leaf clovers back in the Old Testament that were pressed between the pages. Uh, that's not the purpose of the Bible. The purpose of the Bible is for you to use it, for you to study it, for you to know it. Hide it in your heart. Okay? There's an old saying, a Bible that is falling apart belongs to a person that isn't. There's a lot of truth in that. This Bible here, I already got duct tape on it. <laughs> it's not even it's a couple years old. I have it duct taped here. I have it duct taped in the back. I have tape all over the place. It's starting to come apart. You know, it's a Cambridge, you know, handmade Cambridge. So, I hope you liked my little collection there, my, my sword collection. And uh, thank you for watching.